And so we get Anthony Ryder from South Lyon, Michigan, recently selected as the Lions 2020 Fan of the Year. He has a passion about sports broadcasting. With the 112th selection in the 2021 NFL Draft, the Detroit Lions select Amon Ross St. Brown, wide receiver, USC. One prime, baby! What is going on everybody? Welcome back to another Detroit Lions video. The Detroit Lions are 1-6. and six. They have not won a game since the second week of NFL play at Ford Field and they haven't won an away game in the Dan Campbell era. The Lions are not a very good football team. They're not winning a lot of football games. They are very competitive in a lot of football games, but they are not winning the football games they should be winning, and they are not taking advantage of the situations that they should be taking advantage of. And of course, in the NFL, with it being a business and with wins being the end-all be-all, coaching changes and changes in general are going to have to be made within the Lions organization if things want to start changing. I think we've seen the first step of that take place within the Lions organization, and I do believe more steps are coming, whether it be this week, whether it be next week, whether they wait till a little bit later in the season or wait until the offseason entirely, or wait until the offseason entirely, steps are coming. Change is coming to this Detroit Lions team, whether it's good or bad, whether you agree with it or you do not, change is coming to the Detroit Lions coaching staff, to the Detroit Lions roster, and likely to the Detroit Lions, to the Detroit Lions front office. And today we're going to talk about those changes. We're going to talk about the changes that need to or at least should be made or considered and really talk about the state of this Lions coaching staff and this Lions football team before the changes start to be made and whether and where changes should be coming from. So, with that being said, Aubrey Pleasant was officially fired by the Detroit Lions. The defensive backs coach of two years has now been fired and is no longer a member of the Detroit Lions coaching staff. And there are a lot of people upset about this. There are a lot of people that do not understand this firing. There's a lot of people that are upset that it was not Aaron Glenn, the defensive coordinator, who was fired from his position. Now, I understand Aubrey Pleasant had a good resume coming in. Right, Aubrey Pleasant was the guy that coached with Jalen Ramsey. He got some good production out of the Rams defensive backs. He got you know, some good production out of some unexpected talent in Los Angeles. But in Detroit, Aubrey Pleasant really hasn't helped any of our young players develop, with the exception of Jeff Okuda. But I think that there may be a reason for that as well that is not just Aubrey Pleasant. But when you look at Aubrey Pleasant's tenure in Detroit, there wasn't really a great cornerback or safety that showed out and played and really took a huge step under Aubrey Pleasant. Right, Of course, last year, I think Tracy Walker had a good year, but I don't think Tracy Walker was ever having bad years before Aubrey Pleasant came in, and I don't think that Aubrey Pleasant really raised the level or raised the play of Tracy Walker significantly. You could look at Amani Oruwariye's six interceptions last season, but Amani Oruwariye has played as a solid cornerback one for the past three years for the Detroit Lions prior to when Aubrey Pleasant officially joined the coaching staff. And this year, we're seeing a huge regression from Amani Oruwariye under the same coach usage of Aubrey Pleasant. Now, you can say Jeff Okuda is having a very good year, but Jeff Okuda has never had the opportunity to have a good year, and Jeff Okuda, very frankly, could just be a very good football player who is finally healthy and being used properly. Right, his rookie year, he was healthy, but he was not being used very well, was really being thrown under the bus by Matt Patricia. Second year, started playing really, really well in Aaron Glenn's defensive system, and then got hurt towards Ed Kelly's 40 snaps into the season. This year, Jeff Okuda is playing like a top 15 corner in the NFL. Jeff Okuda is, quite frankly, playing like one of the best defending secondary members in football. But that very likely is not Aaron Glenn, or that very likely is not Aubrey Pleasant's doing. We saw Jeff Okuda play well in a good scheme last year when he was healthy. We've seen Jeff Okuda this year in a scheme that helps him and gives him a little bit of help, play like a dominant football player. 
I do not believe Aubrey Pleasant was the sole reason Jeff Okuda got better. I don't think Jeff Okuda was ever bad. I think he was either put in poor situations or not healthy. Now he is both, and I think that is the doing of, of course, Luck and him with the injury concerns and Aaron Glenn as the defensive coordinator. And I would say the same, the same thing about Kirby Joseph. Aaron Glenn, I think, is putting Kirby Joseph in situations to succeed. I think he is putting Kirby Joseph in a good position to make some plays, and as of right now, over the past three weeks, we have seen him do so. Now, Aaron Glenn, by no means, is fault-free at this point, but I really, really don't think Aubrey Pleasant is performing and coaching up to the level that he should be, and I don't think he is the only one. Other coaches I think need to be on the hot seat include Todd Wash, whose defensive line has underperformed for the past two seasons, as well as I think... Aaron Glenn himself needs to be on the hot seat as well. Not necessarily be fired. I don't think either of them should necessarily be fired within the week or be fired within the season even, but I think both of them are underperforming with where they should be. And I don't, again, think talent is the real problem because especially in the favor of Todd Wash, Todd Wash has been given Aiden Hutchinson at the second overall pick, Josh Pascal with a second round pick, John Kaminsky from waiver wires, Ali McNeil with a top 100 pick, as well as Charles Harris through free agency. He's also been gifted and walked into a role where Julian Okwara was a top was a top 100 pick in his draft class, a situation where Romeo Okwara was coming off of a 10-sack season. Since Todd Wash has joined the team, there hasn't been an elite pass rusher. There hasn't really been a whole lot of development from our young players or from the guys that should be making plays on the defensive line. And yes, they are young, but there has been five top 100 picks on this defensive line this year, and there is seven team sacks from the defensive line. That is just over one sack for every player drafted within the top 100. And of those players drafted within the top 100, Josh Pascal does not have a sack, Julian Okwara does not have a sack, Ali McNeil does not have a sack. It is Aiden Hutchinson and Blitzes getting home for the Detroit Lions. Charles Harris, who you just paid $7 million a year, has one sack this season. And granted, some of these players have missed time. Josh Pascal has not always been healthy, right? Charles Harris has not been healthy the last two weeks. There has been rotations. There has been problems. There has been injury concerns. But if you are Todd Wash, your defensive line is severely underperforming up to this point. And I think if you're Aaron Glenn, your defense in general is really, really struggling up to this point for where they talent-wise should be on paper. And I know, again, there's going to be a lot of people saying, well, they don't have the talent. Well, Brad Holmes hasn't given them enough players to really build a defense. Brad Holmes has spent nine of his 15 draft selections on defensive players and has spent four of those nine picks on front four members for the defensive line. He has drafted four defensive linemen, he has drafted two linebackers, and he has drafted, I believe, three secondary members up to this point, being Iffy, Kirby, and Chase Lucas. That is your nine defensive players on the defensive side of the ball. Are all of them going to be starters? No. But Brad Holmes drafted you two defensive linemen, two interior defensive linemen, in the second and third rounds two years ago. One of them has been hurt. I think that is fair to assess and not fair to put on the coaching staff. But Aleem McNeil, I don't think is developed as far as he should be at this point. Second overall pick, Aiden Hutchinson, is not as developed to this point as I think he should be as the number two overall pick. Josh Pascal is a very good player, and we saw the immediate impact he had versus the Dallas Cowboys. I think it's a little early for him, but even he, I think, should be a little bit more successful. Julian Okwara, at this point, if you're a good coach, should have been developed. He's going into his fourth year of NFL play next year. This is a player that is going into a contract year and has five career sacks as a top 100 pick. The defensive line coach is not performing, and his players are underperforming as an entirety. And, you know, you look at some other positional coaches on the team, Hank Fairley is built a dominant offensive line. And yes, he's gotten a little bit more talents, right? He's gotten a couple more first round picks. Jonah Jackson was a third round pick, turned him into a Pro Bowl guard, right? Halapaloi Vitae Vitae was a free agent that was overpaid, drafted, I believe, in the sixth round when he was taken. Is a Pro Bowl level guard, or at least was last year when he was playing. Hank Fairley has plugged multiple UDFAs, has plugged multiple late round picks into his offensive line when injuries arise, and they still play like a top 10 unit. 
Kelvin Shepard on the defensive side of the ball has gotten the least help of any coach on the defensive side of the ball, right? Has gotten the least draft picks, has gotten the least free agent help of the defensive positional coaches, and somehow his unit is the best unit on the field. Kelvin Shepard has turned fourth round pick Derek Barnes and sixth round pick Malcolm Rodriguez into legit starting linebackers in the NFL. He has turned career special teamer Chris Board into a legit role playing linebacker on the defense that is one of our most efficient linebackers on the team. Kelvin Shepard is succeeding more and overachieving more with less talent and less help than the rest of the positional staff. The offensive side of the ball is achieving more with less help than what the defensive staff has been given, right? I would say that the wide receivers coach, Antoine Randall-L, has turned, has turned Amon Ross St. Brown into one of the better wide receivers in the NFL, and it seems like every single wide receiver that comes through Detroit seemingly has some good success, right? Khalif Raymond never really had a lot of receiving success until he came to Detroit. Now, I'd say he's a fairly successful wide receiver. Right, Amon Ross St. Brown, fourth round pick, all of a sudden, Pro Bowl caliber wide receiver. You look at Tommy Kramer, undrafted free agent, never had a shot of making the roster. All of a sudden, is the preseason MVP and is talking, you know, is in legit talks of making this roster because of how good he played. Every wide receiver that has gotten a chance to be coached by Antoine Randall L has succeeded for the most part. Right, of course, you have injury concerns and stuff like that, but injuries are not are not on the coach. I will never hold injuries against a significant or against a particular coach. But you look at Antoine Randall L is succeeding without a lot of significant draft capital, right? You look at Hank Fairley, yes, he's gotten the talent and gotten the draft capital, but when injuries have arisen and he's had to plug in UDFA's fifth, sixth, seventh round talents, those guys have still played up to good levels, right? I would say that the running backs coach, Deuce Staley, has gotten the most out of has gotten a lot out of DeAndre Swift, has gotten a ton out of Jamal Williams, and somehow found a diamond in the rough of Craig Reynolds, who is also a very good undrafted free agent rookie running back who has succeeded when he has asked to been when he's asked to step up. Right? Tight ends coach. When it was Ben Johnson, TJ Hawkinson was very good. They found Brock Wright. Their tight ends continue to succeed despite not being highly drafted players. So why is there no excuse for the defense that's gotten more help in three agency and through the draft than the offense when the offense is succeeding? When Kelvin Shepard is succeeding at linebackers coach, why is Aaron Glenn and Aubrey Pleasant and Todd Wash being held above this standard of they haven't gotten any help? Aaron Glenn and Todd Wash have gotten more help than any other positional coach on the roster, and Aubrey Pleasant maybe hasn't gotten a top cornerback, but they have had talent in that secondary that he can work with. So with that being said, with the little rant being over, changes need to come, right? The offensive coaching staff is working, right? I would say Jared Goff is still hindering the offense, but as far as the actual coaching staff themselves, I think it's working. Ben Johnson's working. The QB coach is working. I'd say everybody on the offensive side of the ball coaching-wise is good enough to win you football games. I think Jared Goff needs to change. That's a player personnel issue. I don't think that's a coaching issue. Dan Campbell has had his ups and downs this season, but I'd say over the past two weeks, Dan Campbell has been much better. He's been still kind of aggressive when he needs to be, right? Was aggressive at the end of the first half against Miami. That resulted in points, by the way, which I don't think he gets enough credit for because if that play had failed, everybody would have been complaining. But since it worked and got them points, everybody's real quiet about it. But Dan Campbell over the past two weeks has improved drastically, right? He has still been aggressive on some fourth downs, but has also taken his points. Has also played and coached really good games in back-to-back -back weeks. And I don't think Dan Campbell is the problem. I think he is learning and getting better. I really think the last two weeks have been big steps for Dan Campbell in the right direction. The offense is working. The head coach, I think, is taking significant strides to get better. Why can't the defense coach up to standard? Why can't the defense get the most out of their players? Why can't the defensive backs coach turn a cornerback that was a Pro Bowl caliber guy six interceptions a season ago, why can't he coach that guy to be better? Why can't the Detroit Lions secondary cover people when their coaching staff is so good? Why can't the defensive line get pressure despite all the capital put into their rotation on the defensive line? The defensive coaching staff, I think, has to change. I think changes will be made either very soon or at least by the end of the season. And I think the Lions, with another year, with another with another 
free agency class and draft class, assuming they hit like they have the last two years in, in the draft and hopefully getting a few good free agents, the coaching staff, I think, is the problem. Right? I think pairing a really young team with a really young coaching staff wasn't a great move in hindsight. Right, There needs to be some level of experience. There needs to be some level of accountability. And I think right now, 90% of the Lions roster is just naive to the fact that they just don't know things. Right, Aaron Glenn's young. Aubrey Pleasant's pretty young. Kelvin Shepard's pretty new to coaching. Right, Their coaching staff is young. Their players are young. They need veterans. They need experience. And the coaching staff needs to change and i think it will but with all that being said that's all i got for you guys today thank you all so much for watching let me know your opinions of this coaching staff down in the comments below I'd be very curious to you guys think with all that being said that's all i got for you guys today thank you all so much for watching and until next time and as always go lions